I don't know what I can say is a direct result of that, except that some of you are getting educated by those efforts. Uh, what if it failed? Well, you made an investment in a lot of students that are now alumni, and only 20% of them donate back to the school. So I think that's a failed investment as far as that's concerned for development. Uh, you know, it's hard for us to justify the small percentage of alumni who donate when we're asked by potential donors, you know, how many alumni donate, what percentage, what percentage of alumni donate. And, you know, the idea is, you know, if they say, you know, why should I donate to the school if only 20% of your alumni donate? It's a hard question to answer. And that, that has failed. It's something that we talked about uh, extensively on Friday morning, and so that's part of the dialogue in the school right now. I hope so. Um, has there been a system of checks and balances in place regarding the financial oversight of Cooper? Uh, and then for how long? And if so, has it apparently not worked and got us into this situation? And uh, if that's the case, what new system of checks and balances do you propose for the future? Okay, if it is, it's a, a, my lawyer here would tell me that's a leading question. It, 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 it has worked. We have a system of checks and balances. We have the uh, finance committees that work with TC, with the investment. It was the vice president of finance to go through the numbers. That's, we have an audit committee that checks the numbers and we work with outside auditors to verify those numbers before it's presented to the state every year. That's a requirement that we have to do. Why has administrative compensation been far more over the past 10 years than faculty compensation? Well, to get quality people in those positions, we have to pay the prevailing rate. And the rates uh, throughout higher education have gone up, which is one of the reasons, again, that the cost of higher education throughout the country is growing faster than inflation. And did the deficit balloon because of the new academic building loan or for some other reason? No, the, again, the, the new academic building the uh, loan was a plus for us, uh, so again, it's, it's not a fair question. Uh, it, it's a systemic deficit. Costs are going up faster than we can raise money. And because we don't charge tuition, look, if the tuition is $38,500, and we have 1,000 students, if everybody paid that tuition, that's $38,500,000 a year. Deficit gone. And my goal is to see, not that we break even, we have to make, in a sense, we have to make more of them. We have to have a surplus so that we can invest in new technologies, better facilities. And each dean I talk to has a wish list of things they'd like to get to improve your education. We don't have the money to get that right now. And that's why breaking even is not my goal. It's having a surplus so we can fund extra stuff. Um, I think you might have already answered this, but um, is, it, um, is it financially beneficial to restructure or pay off the new academic? Uh, uh, number one, if we had the money, we might consider doing that, but also there's a prepayment penalty in the world which would prohibit us from doing that, and it costs too much to do that. Uh, and again, I think I might have already mentioned this, but was some of the borrowed money used for the endowment? Does this assume that the endowment will outperform the interest rate over the life of the loan, or was there some other consideration? You know, some of the money did go into the endowment, and it did get a better return than Fortunately, that money some of it had to be drawn out to cover the deficit. Again, the systemic deficit is our problem. The president said last week that there is very little money to cut out of the academic program or at the 41 Cooper Square. Nevertheless, have the schools been asked to pare down frills and other expenses that do not contribute to the school's academic mission? Do any of the deans want to answer that question? <laughs> I mean, yes, everyone's been cut down. We run the very, there's no fluff. Really is no fluff. I wish we had money for fluff. Uh, would you be able to give specific financial details regarding this institution's other activities, in particular one off events such as PR activities, especially those involving the Board of Trustees and including the presidential inaugurations? There's not a ton of PR activities with the Board of Trustees that I'm aware of, and I probably know. As far as the inauguration, uh, you know, we view that also as a public relations event. It's to get people interested in the school to hopefully raise donations. So anything that's done with PR is with the goal of getting a return on that and the donations. Uh, and finally, uh, there is the issue of uh, trust among the alumni. Are students willing to give back because 
I'm willing to give back because of a lack of trust in leadership, past decisions, sense of having no voice, lack of outreach by the institution, fear that tuition will be imposed, and finally because despite commitment to the Cooper mission, many actually feel that the institution did not treat them well, and moreover that the existence of free tuition, rather than being treated as a core principle, is often used as an excuse for not investing in student life and Okay, here's my view on this. I've worked the Phonathon for decades already. You know, talking to alumni, you know, there are alumni who won't give back to the school because they're annoyed that Green Camp was sold in the 70s. There are alumni who complain about a particular professor giving them a hard time on a test and they don't want to give back to the community. I mean, there's a thousand reasons why people claim they don't want to give back to the community. But, you know, when they leave here and they fill out their applications for grad school, they're proud to put Cooper Union down as their undergraduate school. Right? And when they apply for a job, they plan to be able to say they attend Cooper Union because that carries a lot of weight. You know, when they're in parties and social circles, I'm sure they feel pretty good about saying they attend Cooper Union. You know, so you know, if that pissed off about Cooper Union, they don't want to give back, then I suggest they give back their degrees. You know, I mean, it's, I, how do you answer a question like this? Why don't people give back to a school that gave them a free education worth now, you know, a hundred thousand thousand dollars? To me, it's baffling. It truly is. Okay, um, and with that, we're going to talk about tuition policy. Uh, if you could explain the tuition option, meaning um, how much would be charged at the top rate, uh, when would it take effect, with, them, with which incoming class, et cetera. Okay, first of all, there's no tuition policy in place yet. You know, tuition is an option that's on the table. It has to be looked at. If we're going to do our job responsibly as trustees, we have to look at every option. Tuition is one of those options, and we do consider it the last resort option. Uh, how much would be charged? Well, we actually have people, experts, you know, outside consultants, looking into that. You know, uh, be assured that anybody who is truly needy will still get a full tuition scholarship.